ultimately a SPAC investor, when we bring back a financial technology deal for them to consider, can vote yes or no, and further, can choose to redeem their cash if they don't like the deal. And when is that going to happen, and what sort of qualifications are you looking for when you determine your investment? Yeah, we're, we're looking for great financial technology companies that are ready to be public. They're public company ready. They'll benefit from being public. Uh, and we're looking in, in spaces that are benef benefiting from huge trends that are going to serve as tailwinds for the next decade. The increasing value of data, increasing ubiquity of data, so companies that are producing data or distributing data, analyzing data, and then also companies that are providing efficiency solutions that are helping companies move from a high cost uh, to a low cost focus. I mean, we're seeing it everywhere, whether it's regulation crowding out cost or the move from active to passive. Companies that can provide these sort of efficiency solutions that help companies be more, more effective. I mean, FinTech obviously intensely competitive area right now. A lot of money been thrown at it. You have SoftBank in there bidding for stuff. What's the edge? I mean, where you sat at the New York Stock Exchange, did you get a window on, on what matters there? Yeah, a couple, couple things. Uh, first of all, I'm looking to actually go in and run the company that we acquire, uh, which is unique for SPAC. I, I want to run a public company. I guess as of today, so I am. It's not like a, private equity. We're just going to roll up the industry. No, no, it's, it's, it's different from private equity. Well, it, first of all, in the sense that it's public. Yeah. The, the company is public. But it's different in the sense that I want to go in and run the business. We're also looking for partner deals. So it may indeed be a private equity firm that owns a great company, they're looking to take some chips off the table, but they want to have confidence in the management team and owner that, that comes in. So we're, we're not looking to compete with SoftBank's Vision Fund. We're also looking for some of the unloved, overlooked businesses in fintech. You know, it might not be a 100% year-over-year grower like a, like a Coinbase or an Ant Financial. It may be a business that's growing 5%. We can run it a little better and take that to 10% and increase margins and maybe do a few acquisitions and really create a great $20 billion enterprise value company. You know, I learned from the master and Jeff Sprecher in how to uh, uh, yeah. make money for, for your investors. The company took the company advice. public yeah. around about three bucks a share. It's trading around about 75 bucks a share. Yep. Yep. And I look to apply, I'm looking to apply some of those same uh, lessons learned that uh, uh, some, of the, some of those same strategies that I learned from, from working with Jeff. But, but 30,000 feet, I mean, of all, you could have chosen all kinds of directions. You went with FinTech because of your competency here or because you think pro it, it's more promising than, I don't know, the cloud or some other consumer-oriented sector? It's both, and that's not just the easy answer. I mean, I was running the New York Stock Exchange with absolutely incredible colleagues and having a blast every day. You guys saw me around here. I loved working with Stacey Cunningham, the new president, John Tuttle. So. The fact that I left uh, uh, underscores that it's absolutely both of those. FinTech is a great area to invest right now. There's haves and have nots uh, where there's great high flying companies, but there's companies that are unpolished jewels. And I saw that as, as, as an incredible opportunity. And also I wanted to go run a public company and you know, working for Jeff, uh, that's a little bit like playing quarterback behind Tom Brady. Uh, so you know, I'm striking out on my own. I feel like at the right moment in time. And you know, the last thing I'll mention is when you have a great management team, like I did at the New York Stock Exchange, who supports me, quite frankly, allowed me to come on your set and look good on behalf of the NYC. Sometimes the best thing you can do is get out of the way and, and, let, them, and let them take over, and they're going to flourish. One thing you also did in your role as the president is you brought a lot more SPACs to the NYSC, where it was traditionally they would go public at the NASDAQ. Do you think we're going to see more of this trend as fewer private companies decide to IPO? I do. Um, and in fact, uh, you, you saw Dave Cody, an incredible uh, business leader, raise a SPAC last week, also around about... Goldman, right? Uh, with Goldman, also around about $600 million. So I think you're seeing the credibility of SPACs with TPG's participation, Carlyle's participation. It's growing right in front of our eyes. But I actually uh, spearheaded with one of my colleagues, Carolyn, the effort to, to uh, uh, get more SPACs here in the NYC. And it was right behind Carl, I met a gentleman named Martin Franklin a couple years ago, who first kind of told me about SPACs. And then I met guys like Mark Ein and Carl Peterson at TPG. And I, and I thought, geez, this is a really good vehicle to build a great public company that's a financial technology company that can compound returns for investors. And so that, that was the kind of seed, the original seed of the idea. And it just felt like now was the moment to leave because there was such a strong succession plan in place here at the NYC. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.